Hello and thank you for viewing. Here we go with another episode of The Return of the Deadeye. I just fast traveled from Tumbleweed over to my camp. My camp is southwest of Armadillo. The very last scene of this episode, I show a map. So if, I just showed the map there too, but it was kind of too fast. Well, you just showed it again. I'm looking at that gang hideout that's near. I'm also looking at the player that's up in Armadillo because if you look at my previous upload, that same player, this is a continuation from my previous upload, that same player that rode up on me and that I killed is an Armadillo. So I'm keeping an eye on him. I'm going to go hit this gang hideout. Now notice I'm doing it with my Carcano rifle. And that one shot kills all these NPCs. And also if you watch the XP, I'm getting a plus five for distance, getting plus five for Death Rider being on my horse, getting plus five for special ammo. And if I was taking the time to get headshots, I would be getting a plus five for that too. So that's distance is really something that you don't usually get your plus five on unless you're doing it from far away. And you know, that's not often done, but I've noticed the Carcano is very effective at clearing gang hideouts if you can get range on it. I started doing this up in Coulter by Flacco, the gang hideout up there. Because I was hunting long range with animals, I just had it equipped and I gave it a try one time. I was like, hey, I really like this. So that's like my go-to nowadays for a gang hideout is the Carcano. And now I see this player from Armadillo. You know, it looks like he was coming up on me again. I've already dealt with this guy twice before in the previous episode. I'm not going to give him a chance to come up and shoot me while I'm trying to loot. You know, I mean, like, he kills me. Like, why is he coming up on me? You know, like, I am mean, just, just back off, dude. I don't need no trouble You're coming up on me like that. You know, that's not cool. So, anyways, moving on from that, fortunately he doesn't come back. I think he's realized at this point... I'm not looking for company. I don't know what he's thinking in the first place, but because it's nighttime, I'm not even going to mess around and try and get those hawks by my camp location. Okay, because it's nighttime, you're not going to usually get hawks to spawn. Also, like the condor, the vultures, things like that, eagles. And I have seen an eagle over by where my camp is, but it was flying overhead. I don't know where it purchased for one over there. There might be one. There's probably numerous bird perches in that area I don't know about. Now, I'm still working on this method. This is something that I just started working on today. So you're getting one of my first few hunts here. And I did hunt it a couple times prior to making any recordings. But uh, I just was kind of getting the feel for it. I wasn't even actually recording the first couple times. I was trying to actually... I spent probably an hour just loading in and out of the game, seeing the different locations I could get the camp to pop up at. And the spot that it's at, I didn't even think was possible. Like, it blew my mind when it popped up there, because you can literally see, like, three hawk and two condor static spawn locations from camp, right where it's set up. So, during the daytime... When you fast travel into camp, you can be very lucrative. You can see that in my previous video. In like three and a half minutes, I bagged and skinned three hawks and was back to the butcher, like round trip. That's insane. So, and also, okay, so, so now, like, because it's nighttime, I'm making the trek. I'm getting to know some spawn locations here. Now, I know these cougar spots... And today's actually a really bad day for doing this, because today has a daily challenge to kill two cougars. So I guess it depends on how you look at it. If you haven't killed your cougars yet, today might be a really good day for this. I've already killed my cougars, however, so I kind of almost feel a little bad coming into this hunting area and taking down a cougar when I know other people are in the area trying to get their daily challenges done. But at the same time, the cougar will not spawn for me if I've killed one recently. So the fact that I did get one to spawn says that, you know, I'm due for a cougar. 
I don't know. I could kind of like help some people out though and be like, hey, there's a cougar over here, but I don't even have voice chat on, so I can't even communicate with them and let them know. So I kill the cougar, and at this point, I'm looking at the time of day in game. So I know around like 5 or 6 a.m., I think it's 5 a.m., the birds start spawning at Wrath's Color Fork. So I'm, I'm getting close to that, and I'm thinking, you know, I could just, you know, kill a couple pronghorn, maybe some ram, collect some venison, stack some hides up, and wait a couple minutes for the bird spawn before I head into the butcher. Now, if this is daylight, what would be ideal is I spawn in at my camp. I hit those hawks and condor at my camp. Then I go hunt some pronghorn, hunt the cougar, and then by the time I make it to Wrath's Keller Fork, they've already respawned. Those birds will be there and ready for me to go again. So I'm hitting them at my camp as well as at Wrath's Keller Fork. And before you would, you know, make a trip from Tumbleweed up to Wrath's Keller Fork, you'd kill the birds there, shoot back down to Tumbleweed. Sometimes you'd be back up at Wrath's Keller Fork before the birds would even be respawning. So that's kind of like a situation where you're you're being held up waiting on a respawn. With this method, you're able to hit two bird spawns in one trip. The only downside is after you've killed the birds at Rass Color Fork, then you go to the butcher and you fast travel over to your camp. A lot of times you get over to your camp so fast since you were at Rascolor's Fork that the birds won't spawn back at your camp now. And I didn't really realize that while I was doing these hunts. You know, like I'm saying, I'm, I'm still working on this area and getting to know it some. So I'm thinking in the future, the pro play will be after hitting Rascolor's Fork to continue hunting a little bit more in the area between Rascolor Fork and the Butcher, kill some hogs or some pronghorn, some ram, whatever you can do to kill a little bit of time before you get into the Butcher again. And that way, when you do get to your camp, the birds will be spawned and ready to go again. And then that will make this just a fluid run through. And I really like the fact that it's, it's covering such a large area creates a lot of diversity in the hunt. You're not going to have a situation where you get, you know, too bored with it being too repetitive. You can see even, I'm actually even crafting some split point on this hunt. Okay, you know, $71.62, 705 XP in 26 minutes. You're probably thinking, well, that's not that great on the payway. But you can see I just crafted a whole bunch of split point at the beginning of the hunt, I restocked my ammo, I paid off a bounty, I spent time killing and looting a gang hideout. So those are all four different things, among possibly other things I'm not even noticing in this video, that are slowing the earnings per hour down. But they're things that kind of need done, you know, like you can't go hunting all the time without... Well, I guess you could. You don't have to craft split point. You could use other ammunition besides split point. So that's a factor that you could exclude. I like using split point. I don't know. I'm just like addicted to them or something. I just can't stop. For some reason, I just like split. You know, I think it is. I think it's that they're the cheapest special ammo that you can buy. Yeah, sure, you have to craft it. Take a little time to do that. But, you know, cost-wise, they're the cheapest to get that extra bonus for you know the special ammo bonus so you know i did waste a little time on this hunt i could have improved my earnings per hour if i didn't do those things i mentioned that wasted time so that's something to keep in mind in the future i will be bringing some hunts to you where i won't be wasting that time i'll have my ammo crafted before i start the hunt i won't be stopping for gang hideout you know there won't be holdups there'll be just efficient hunting so we'll see what we can get that up to. You know, $165 an hour, we can definitely do way better than that. I already showed you one time, there's the camp location. I'm east of Mercer Station, southwest of Armadillo. It costs $1 to fast travel from Tumbleweed to this location. It costs $3 to 
to fast travel from camp back to Tumbleweed. Just so you know, you are getting a discount on the way to your camp. If you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you all next time. Until then, happy hunting and happy trails.